I had the opportunity to attend the 2017 Shell Eco Marathon Americas. This year it was held in Detroit, Michigan, and this weekend is really an event around automotive innovation. 114 high school and college teams from eight different countries compete to see who can build the most fuel efficient vehicle. And thanks to Shell for having me out and sponsoring this video. This is such an interesting event and very different from the automotive world that I live in. These high school and college teams build these vehicles from the ground up with the goal of going as far as they can on as little fuel as possible. The vehicles fall into two different categories, the prototype vehicle and the urban concept car. As you might imagine, the prototypes are their really far out there crazy designs, while the urban concept cars look a lot more like a vehicle we're used to seeing. So what does it take to build a 2,500 mile per gallon car? Or in the case of the winning prototype car, a 2,585 mile per gallon vehicle. First, the teams must pick a fuel source, choosing from gasoline, diesel, battery electric, hydrogen, or a number of alternative fuels, including ethanol and compressed natural gas. Keep in mind that this is not about speed, this is about efficiency, so every aspect of the vehicle is built around being safe and efficient. The teams make 10 laps around a track that equals about six total miles and have to do it in 24 minutes. If they run out of fuel or don't complete the course in the allotted time, the run doesn't count and the teams will have another opportunity to get in a qualifying run. Let's talk a little bit about the cars, starting with aerodynamics. Of course, aerodynamics play a huge role in these vehicles. Now, these aren't world speed setting type vehicles, but even a slight change in wind resistance can cause a decrease in fuel economy. So that if bodies are designed to be smooth, sleek, lightweight, as well as strong, and they have to fit the dimensions of the Shell Eco Marathon rules. And those rules do vary depending on a prototype vehicle versus an urban concept car. Next, the teams have to get the weight right. Keeping the weight down on the vehicle is another great way to rack up those MPGs. The rules say that the vehicles can't weigh more than 140 kilograms for prototype and 225 kilograms for urban concept. But funny enough, there were actually a lot of teams that were able to carry their vehicles to to and from the track. Now, of course, there's going to be people in these vehicles, so they do need to have things like brakes. Obviously, the brakes need to stop the vehicle. Rules vary between prototype and urban concept, but in order to achieve maximum MPG, you have to have brakes that have little to no drag, but they also need to hold the vehicle on a very steep slope of 20%. We have a, we use a ramp, which is a 20% slope. And for the prototype, they have, have two separate brake systems, one for the front, one for the rear, and each one has to hold independently. And that, that can be a battle for them as well. Tires also play a huge role in fuel economy. Teams use very narrow tires with ultra low rolling resistance. They need to achieve enough grip to be able to drive the vehicle safely on the track, but also not so much grip that it slows the vehicle down. And of course, things like tire pressure and tread pattern play a big role in making sure these tires are as efficient as they possibly can be. Just like trying to get great fuel economy in our cars, one of the most important aspects of this competition is actually the driver. Not only did teams often put the smallest person inside the cockpit that they could, the actual driving strategy is vital. When to start the engine, when to accelerate, when to turn the engine off and simply coast are all key points to achieving maximum MPG, or in the case of alternative fuels, MPGE, which is miles per gallon equivalent. And in our personal cars, this is the area we can have the biggest impact on getting better fuel economy. Unlike the way I drove this Dodge on the rooftop drive. Each vehicle goes through a rigorous safety and technical inspection, things like seatbelt strength, visibility, emergency shutoffs, fire extinguishers, driver positioning, and more are all checked to be sure that they fit the rules of the Shell Eco Marathon Americas. If a team does fail technical inspection, they do have the opportunity to go back fix whatever failed and then come back for another technical inspection. But cars can't go back out on the track until they pass that very thorough and really challenging technical inspection. While the main portion of the event is built around fuel economy, there is another aspect that's pretty cool to this event. Instead of racing against the fuel gauge, the Drivers World Championship is actually where the drivers race each other. The three regional winners will compete against the winning teams from Asia and Europe in the Drivers World Championship Grand Finale. 
and the winner of the World Championship gets to do an internship with Scuderia Ferrari for a week. This was a really inspiring event to be around so many young people working so hard, looking towards the future, trying to build the most fuel efficient vehicle that they can build. So bravo to all the teams that work so hard to compete. And of course, congratulations to the winner. And hey, if you guys need some technical help or a camera guy when you're working with Ferrari, you know how to find me. So to learn more about Shell Eco Marathon Americas, including the full rules and sign up, there's a link down in the description. You could check that out. All right, everybody, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.